Welcome back everyone. I thought I'd review my top five most popular videos ranging from 200,000 to almost 1 million views. So the first video is uh, cabin regrets. So regrets that I had during the build of the cabin. I think this one hit it out of the park. It's one of my most popular videos. It's almost at a million views right now. I can't believe that. So I sit and chat about the cabin, uh, things that I wish I had done a little differently during the build. Yes, 10 years ago, I worked on building this cabin, built it from the ground up. All those pieces of wood were carried up from the field and put in place. It was a lot of work. I did the video about five years ago and here we are. Still haven't made those changes that I discussed. Again, I really wanted to put a bigger deck on the front with a screened in porch. So maybe this is the year guys. I'm hoping it is that I'll listen to my previous self and we'll get that done. The other thing is take a look at inside the cabin. I think it's aged really, really well. You know, the flooring, the siding, the kitchen, it actually was done really appropriately and very simplistically, which I think is a big thing. I have put in more solar power uh, to the cabin since this video, so I guess I have been able to upgrade. And this is where I first show you the shower house uh, in the making. That is an essential for anybody with a cabin. I highly, highly recommend. Take a look at the field behind me though. Look at those little tiny pine trees. They're now about 12, 13 feet tall. So this goes to show you how much growth happens over five years. I'm really happy with the shower house. That is not a regret to put that in. Before we get into the next video, don't forget, I do put the links down below in the description box. So if you want to go back and watch these uh, Wild DM favorites, go ahead and do so. And the next video is your favorite and mine, Off Grid Cabin Snowed In Part 1. This one's sitting at about 750,000 views. And I think it was really awesome. I think why people really liked it, it was sort of that like, you know, really personal view of everything, um, you know, Blair Witch Project style hanging onto the camera. Terrible videography, but you know, it made it really relatable. Um, you can see me hiking into the cabin in uh, a really bad storm. Funny thing here was, uh, you see as I come into the cabin here, I found these really awesome things from Lee Valley Tools. These slippers that you can kind of put over your boots to go inside your cabin so you don't make things super dirty. Well, boy oh boy, did I ever get ragged on in the comments over these. People thought I was such a slob for not taking off my boots going into the cabin. But you know what? I learned this technique from a, a farmer that I really respect, so I don't really care. But uh, people were fighting in the comments. I think that's why this video got really popular. It was because the views went way up because there's tons and tons of comments. But uh, it was a pretty fun video. As you'll see in the next clip here, uh, this is way before the time of the propane heater. As you can see, it's really cold in the cabin when I get there, so I gotta warm it up. Here's the old kerosene heater. Oh my gosh, I can smell it from here. What a horrible thing. But uh, hey, it warmed us up in those early days and it still lives up uh, in the attic. Only to be dragged out if there is any, you know, has a backup source of heat if necessary. Well, there's a lot of snow that day and uh, it was sort of tricky getting my snowmobile out from underneath all that snow. But as I was uh, working on getting out of the snow machine here, what you guys didn't know is I actually ended up losing a really, really nice uh, pocket knife. It kind of fell in my pocket, probably right there when I fell over. And I uh, wonder what the heck happened to it. And it took me another couple of seasons to find it. I searched all over and thankfully I found it. The property does tend to swallow up a lot of things and uh, you want to keep your eyes peeled for them. A little bit of comedic relief here as I'm taking off with the sled. I end up getting stuck in the field just in front of the cabin. <laughs> I have to laugh at myself sometimes. And here I'm talking a bit about uh, how we use the bathroom back in the day at the cabin. We did not have the shower house with a lovely composting toilet. Yep, we had just a regular uh, bucket and I made a little uh, toilet to kind of go over it. Uh, man, that was a really old days. I mean, it was still a bit of a composting toilet, um, but you know, at the end you had to really sort of truck out the waste. Uh, so it was really, really primitive back then. Really glad that uh, we went ahead and made that shower house that I mentioned earlier in this video. Uh, it was just a real necessity. I'm just heading out now. I heard the, some yelling coming from the neighboring property. Um, so I'm just gonna go see what's going on. At the end of this video, here is the real hook. I heard somebody screaming from another property, so I ran to go check it out. And that's what hooked people into part two. So this video also got a lot of views. Part one got 750,000 and this one uh, got just over, just around 250,000 views. So it wasn't as popular as the initial video. But it still brought back a lot of viewers for all the fun. And uh, this was actually put up exactly seven years ago. So this just tells you how far my videography has come since then. During this video, uh, I explained that, you know, I actually, actually the neighbor was looking for two dogs that ran off into the woods. And I think they found on one 
uh, on a logging road and they just never did find the other one it uh, made it froze or something like that or a wolf got to it which is really really sad so that was the outcome of that one i know a lot of people want to know what happened there um so you can see I got my really old-fashioned snowshoes there um kirk north 51 made me some beautiful new ones uh, that i wear they're from newfoundland so you'll see some of those in some of my other videos these are the really old school ones that i, that I had there at the cabin I'm going out there to check on my trail cams since then you know I used to have about 10 plus trail cams and now uh, they all kind of uh, aged out so I really need to get going and get me some new trail cams to get them set up because I know the wildlife sort of changed around since then oh yes the can of spam I don't know if you guys remember uh, those days at uh, the cabin eating spam and the Vienna sausage uh, cooking challenge video if you're an OG fan of the wild yam you know all about that uh, the uh, the Vienna sausage challenge. A lot of you rose to the occasion and made some delicious meals, and that really bonded us all as an outdoors community. I really those days uh, way back when seven, eight, nine years ago. Those were uh, the early days of the channel. And that really uh, got me meeting some really cool people online uh, that have become lifelong friends. So uh, YouTube is awesome for meeting people. This brings us to homemade glycerin soap. This is one of my favorite how-to videos where I show you how I made beautiful soaps with flowers from my garden. So uh, I think it was a very popular video. It's very easy to do and you know, you don't have to get very, you just buy a few things online or from your local craft store and use what's in your garden to, to make a lovely soap. It's a really visually pleasing video and really fun for me to make. Um, it, it really took off and it has about 220,000 views right now and it's still going really strong. Uh, very popular video. So I really go through all the basic steps. It's super easy to do. This video generated over 4,000 subscribers for me. And uh, it's really wonderful to bring you guys in because I love doing all kinds of things for my channel. It's not just solely a cabin channel. I do like wild crafting and you know just making really lots of wonderful things from what we have uh, you know in our gardens and in our forests. And as you can see, some beautiful flower petals that I was adding to these flower um, sorry to these uh, these soaps. A lot of people were upset with me in the comments saying that you know this is just like a you know melt and pour. Well, yeah, it is. I mean, a lot of people wanted to see me making um, traditional soap, which you know I haven't ruled that out. Uh, maybe I'll do that this year on the channel. I know a lot of you are interested in, uh, you know, making soaps and I'm going to be doing some more salves, I think, uh, and some more, maybe some body butter this year or something like that. I think that'd be a really cool idea. Um, I've got all the stuff to do it, so I think we should just go ahead and do it. Uh, and no, you'll see earlier in this video that I ended up uh, adding a little bit of um, food coloring to some of the different pores that I made for these soaps. And no, you don't turn green or purple or black. Uh, it doesn't do that. I love these soaps. I've used them all and I've had no issues with them rotting or anything like that. This video became so popular at one point, uh, someone actually stole segments of it to put it on their own video, so I had to report that. So, uh, oh boy. Anyways, what can you do? Um, so, you can see the product here is beautiful. Like, isn't that nice? I think that's why a lot of people like the video, is it just looks so visually pleasing and uh, super easy to do. So, uh, don't forget to go check out that video. Uh, really easy, nice thing that you can do, uh, little stocking stuffers for next year or birthdays or even like wedding presents or favors or things like that. As you can see here, I'm packaging them up and putting a little bit of uh, anise there just to uh, accent uh, the soap. So I think they're really pretty. I've done a lot of Christmas videos at the cabin. They're always one of my favorite videos to do. And this one was uh, one that I did many, many years ago, uh, Christmas at the Tiny Cabin. And it has garnered about 170,000 views at this point. Uh, it has the classic uh, delicious meals that I like to prepare at the cabin in there. I mean, look at that beautiful cinnamon and raisin French toast that I'm making. Like, who wouldn't love that? <laughs> and of course, the video also features, you know, the Christmas classics like, uh, you know, getting a Christmas tree, chopping one down from the woods. I did get a lot of heat initially in this video. It was one of the first videos I put out, you know, harvesting a Christmas tree. Um, some people were really angry that I was actually cutting down a Christmas tree, but people don't realize I plant hundreds of trees and tend to, um, you know, a, a little plantation that I've not naturally come up on the property there. So uh, we're really good stewards of the land, and quite often the Christmas trees that we do take are ones that um, we're using, to, you know, we need to thin out an area. So uh, never fear, we do take care of the land. Of course, I love decorating my Christmas tree with special ornaments. Uh, one of my favorite videos uh, for Christmas that wasn't as popular as this one was Tiny Cabin Woodland Christmas. Really magical, huge storm around Christmas time. That was one of my favorite ones. Um, you know, making those baked apples that my grandfather used to make. And uh, it was a really special Christmas there at the cabin. So check that one out too if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed a little uh, reminiscing of uh, previous uh, top five videos. Go check them out if you haven't seen them. Have a great week. We'll see you in the next one.